Hello and welcome to the third and final installment of the videos on the final project. This is the one where I will show you how to use Adobe Spark right off the bat, um, and I've mentioned it elsewhere, but uh, if you would rather use something other than Adobe Spark, that's okay. Um, the idea here, though, is that you will create a digital um, annotated bibliography. Um, the digital is to give you experience with uh, digital tools and digital ways of creating um, knowledge and information. Um, it also allows you to have ownership over the thing you create so that you can maybe show it off later to show that you have skills in terms of thinking critically about uh, research sources and that you've created a project to show that. Um, so those are a couple of the ideas behind you know, why do it this way. Adobe Spark is fairly easy to get on board with and to use. Um, it allows for a lot of multimedia as well. Um, but I have seen folks use um, Google Sites very well. There's a thing called Wakelet that is easy to kind of pull in um, information from the internet and annotate with. Um, so if you have something that you would rather use as a digital platform to create your project, just let me know. Um, more than likely, I'll approve it. So I just want to check with you first before you decide to go off um, in your own direction in that regard. So again, here I'm going to show you Spark. Um, remember that you'll be building a digital annotated bibliography. So with this project, you're not writing a research paper. You're just doing that step kind of before what you would do to create a more polished um, research narrative. You will still be answering your question, though, um, in your annotated bibliography through your evaluation of each of your sources. And so I hope that'll become a little clearer as we go on. Um, so you can read more about that in this section three of the assignment instructions. I'm going to scroll down. Um, before I click to show you Adobe Spark, um, and I'm going to post this video I'm creating right here in this link, um, I want to just go over the elements of the project that are necessary for, um, for your work here. So one, you need to have an introduction paragraph in your project that um, provides a strong analytical thesis statement. If you have a good analytical research question, that should be fairly easy uh, because your answer or kind of the conclusions you've come to about your research question, that will be your thesis statement. So your thesis will answer that and take a stand and say, this is why this is the best answer to my question. Second, you'll include an annotation paragraph for each of your sources. So you'll pull in your primary source, your two secondary uh, academic sources, your three other secondary sources, and whatever social media sources you find. You'll bring those into the project, and you'll write a paragraph on each one of those that gives a brief summary. So that might be three to five sentences of what uh, information is contained in this particular source. What, uh, excuse me, then you'll include a couple of sentences with details that show, so you have to have evidence from your source, don't just tell, uh, why you've judged that source to be credible. Um, there were some ideas about credibility in the second video in this three-part uh, video series. And then lastly, um, you need to include a couple of sentences that explain in specific terms how this source helped you to answer your research question and to formulate your thesis. So was this source helpful? It may be that some sources aren't particularly helpful or they're not as helpful as others. So this section of the annotation is a place to say, with this primary source uh, really helped me answer my research question for X, Y, Z reasons. Then you get to your first academic secondary source and you might say, you know, this one was not as helpful um, in helping me answer my questions. It did provide this information that was interesting, but it wasn't really what I was looking for. Um, hopefully you won't, you won't have all of your sources that way. If, if most of your sources aren't answering your question, you may need to either redo your question come up with a different question that you can answer with your sources, or um, you might just want to look for different sources. Then finally, once you've done those annotations, you'll include a conclusion paragraph to sum up your findings um, and bring your readers back to your overall thesis. Um, so what I'm going to do here, I'm going to open this Google Doc that um, because something I want you to do with your work is to, whether you use Google Docs or Word Docs, um, whatever uh, word processor you use, 
type out your work in one of those, save it on your own, and then put it into Adobe Spark. So this is what I'm going to use to show you how to, to do Adobe Spark. Here's the information I've written in a Google document on the final project. OK, so let's see. I'm going to close some of these tabs because there's too many things open. Um, let me go back to our uh, instructions. I'm going to open Adobe Spark. And I've logged out so that I can show you what you'll need to do to log in and get started. Um, so this is Adobe Spark. It's just spark.adobe.com. And as you read here, um, it creates stunning visual stories. Um, there, it has very, uh, several different um, features and platforms. Um, you'll have to click Start Now if you don't yet have an account. It's free to sign up for. Um, if you have an Adobe account already, you can just log in with your Adobe account information, even if you haven't used Spark. At least I think that's true. Um, so you'll click Start Now, and you'll just follow the steps to create an account. Going over here, you'll, uh, once you have an account, if you're coming back to log in, you'll just click Log In. Um, the way that I've done my Adobe Spark account, my video always gets slow, my face freezes when stuff's loading. Um, I've logged in with Google. Again, you could have done email um, or an Adobe ID. So any whichever way you used um, to log into Spark, that's what you'll do. I'm going to click Google because that's the one I did. All right, and then once you've logged in, you'll see, oh, I have to pick which one. I have too many people using my computer, apparently. All right, so. Um, once you've logged in, you'll see your dashboard, um, depending on how fast your internet connection is being. Mine's wanting to be slow today, apparently. <laughs> Here we go. Something's coming up. OK. All right, so you can tell your story in a lot of ways with Spark. As you see here, you can do Instagram, you can do Facebook, you can do slideshows and presentations with Spark. Um, once you have some projects going, you'll click Projects to see things you're working on. So for example, if you're working on your project and you step away from it and you want to come back to it, you'll see it here when you click on Projects. Um, here are some things I've created. Um, you'll just click Edit to go back to it. If you want to create a new one, obviously, click Create a Project. And it will pop up this box. Um, I'll show you how to do a web page. That's what I've most frequently done and, and guided uh, students to do. You can do whatever you want, though, as long as you're able to present your annotated bibliography in it. Um, I've seen people do great videos with Spark. Um, again, you can uh, present your source and then either have a written statement about that, your written paragraph, um, or you can do a voiceover where you're explaining um, in your own words, uh, what you've found. Um, I haven't played so much with the collage, Instagram, Facebook. I've done a couple of flyers. Those might not be as useful for what we're doing, but again, you can play around with it and use uh, what you prefer. I'm going to click web page, as I mentioned. Um, it takes just a second for Spark to load. Here's a, here's a blank Spark presentation. Um, so I'm going to walk you through how to put stuff in here um, using that document that I created. So again, as I've advised you to do, um, do your introduction paragraph, your sources and annotations and everything in a separate document so that you just have to come over here and copy and paste. So this is the New Mexico history. Um, this won't always be for intercession classes, I'm thinking. So sometimes I have other classes use the same project. So I'm just going to do uh, New Mexico history final project. I'll delete the word intercession. So I just did a control C. I'm going to click over here where it says add title, control V, and there it is. I'm going to delete the word intercession because I want to do that. And you'll see it resizes. Um, you can change the theme. I'm going to move my head because my head's in the way. Uh, so if you click themes over here, you can choose a different theme depending on what you want your project to look like. Again, that's up to you. Be as creative as you want. Show your style. I'm just going to go with the basic theme here. 
For your subtitle, um, you should use your research question. So I'm going to go over here and make my head smaller this time. And I'm going to pull out my research question. So I use, for example, this one. And I'm going to put that in as my subtitle. So I just did the copy and paste. Um, now, the next thing is to add a photo. So let me show you how you do that. Um, you can either upload a photo from your computer. You can connect to Dropbox if you have photos there, or to Google Photos or Drive. Um, Creative Cloud and Lightroom are uh, Adobe products. So again, if you have those things and you want to connect them, that's awesome. If not, you can just upload photos if you found them and downloaded them to your computer, or you can click Find Free Photos. These come from Unsplash, um, which has uh, free open Creative Commons licensing for its photographs. That means that um, all of these are, are uh, open to use without any restrictions. Um, it does mean, though, that they're, they're limited. Um, it doesn't have everything. So if you want to have historical photos, you may need to download those from other websites and upload those to Spark. Um, if we just search for, um, I'll do Los Alamos. We'll see what comes up. All right, so we got some cities that are not Los Alamos. We have some landscape that looks like it could be more like Los Alamos. Um, so again, that's not super helpful. Let's try Manhattan Project. I must have misspelled Manhattan if I forgot the N. All right, Manhattan Project. Um, you know, again, we get Manhattan, not necessarily Manhattan Project. Let's scroll down a bit, see if we can come up with anything. Not necessarily. Huh. All right, so again, that's just showing you what the limitations here are. Um, you may find photos in the free photos, you may not. Um, so you'll have to do a Google image search maybe uh, to find photos. Something I do, um, I'm, I'll connect to Dropbox real quick. It disconnects your account every time, I should point out, every time you log out of Spark, it disconnects from Dropbox. So you have to go in and give it permission. Um, once again, if you're not logged into Dropbox, you'll have to log into that. Same for any of these others that are in that list that you want to connect to. It is good in terms of the privacy considerations that it doesn't stay connected all the time to your various accounts, um, that it only is there when you need it. So once you do that, it brings you back here. You have to click Photo again. And now you'll notice this disconnect, so you know you're connected. I'll click Dropbox. I'm going to scroll down. Um, this is my whole Dropbox. I often do screenshots, so I'll find something online that I want to use. I'll take a screenshot of it and save it in this folder on Dropbox. And then I will um, have it available for things like this. I do have a lot of the rubrics and things that I have in our class assignments, other things I'm interested in. Um, see, for the sake of just getting on with this, I'll choose this um, photo of what may be Billy the Kid um, playing croquet. Um, I may decide that I don't like that one because it's kind of blurry, but we'll just use it here. Um, you can replace the photo, you can delete the photo, you can change the focal point, which means if I want um, things to, if I want to see more of Billy's head, I can do that. Click Save, and there the photo is a little different. Okay, so that's what you do with a photo. When you scroll down, um, you can add another photo, you can add text, you can add a button. Buttons are ways to embed hyperlinks, so if you have a link to your source, um, you'll use the button. Um, you can embed videos, make a photo grid, a glide show, split layout, and so on. So again, play with that. Be as creative as you like. Um, I'm going to add text. So I'm going to go back over to my document, and I'm going to um, copy what would be the introduction. This isn't exactly what you're going to be doing. So if you read what I've written here, this is more about what you would do if you were doing the project. Um, so these are, again, instructions and pointers to help you with the project that I'm posting here. This is not an example of the project, if that kind of makes sense. 
So if I decide that I want to add um, another photo here, just to kind of break things up, I'll just go and I can go back to my screenshots. I can go look for other things. Um, this one's good for the Manhattan Project. Then I can decide if I want it to stay in line, if I want it to fill the screen, be a window, um, so on and so forth. You know, again, play with those, see what you like. I made that one a window. And so this is what it looks like as you scroll. Um, you can change the focal point on that too. So if I want it to be up here, I'll do that. And then that just changes what you see as it scrolls through. I'm going to do a button now for the um, uh, primary source that I've found. So what I have here in my example are a couple of different primary sources. Um, the whole point here is to show you one primary source that's not super relevant to my research question, and one that is um, to help you think about how you'll sift through the sources that you find. Um, this one's, I have the, the URL for each of them, so I'm just gonna copy that and go back over here to my button section. And uh, I'm gonna, right here where the www.example, that's where you put the URL, so I'm gonna paste it in there. I'm going to call this one um, Einstein Letter to Roosevelt. And then I want it to be centered, so I'm going to do that. Click Save, and there it is, Einstein Letter to Roosevelt. So that button, if uh, people who are reading your project click on it, that will be a link to the source itself. Next, I'm going to add more text. So I'm going to go back to my document, and I'm going to I'm going to copy the text that I've written about that one. So that's what you'll do for your annotations. Your annotations don't have to be quite as long as what I've written here. Um, I mean, they should be a nice chunky little paragraph. If you want to do three short paragraphs that touch on each of the three points you need to hit on um, for all of your sources. So remember, that's a summary of the source. It's um, how and why you find that source credible and then how that source helped you answer your research question. You can do that, separate them into separate paragraphs, or you can just put it all into one. So this one, what I've commented on um, specifically is how this source um, is not relevant to my project. So you'll notice I've still been able to write a bit about the source. I've written why it's credible and why it's important for understanding the Manhattan Project, but then I've written about how it didn't help me answer my particular question because my specific question was about why Los Alamos. Um, so Einstein's letter to Roosevelt, although it got atomic uh, research going in the United States, it does not say anything about why Los Alamos. Um, all right, so I'm going to do, um, this time I'll do a split layout just to show you what that looks like. I'm going to throw in an image. Um, let's see what we got. Here, let's do a zobra this time. Again, it's not relevant. You want to find relevant images. Um, I'm just doing this to show you how this, this looks and how it works. Over here, I can add a button. And so I'm going to do that. I'm going to go back over to my work. And here's that other primary source that I mentioned. This one's Robert Oppenheimer an interview in 1965. So it was after the fact. But it's a primary source because he was directly involved um, with the project, and this is his account of it, um, or at least part one of his accounts of it. So I'm going to copy that URL for the interview, do the same thing, paste it in, Oppenheimer interview, spelled it wrong, 1965. I'm going to click Save. And then you'll notice um, there's still room here for me to add text. So I'm going to do that. And I'm going to add text that, again, this is an annotation that explains um, why this is a good source for the project, how and why this one does help. And so you'll notice that with this split screen, the image stays there. And if your uh, text is longer, it'll hold the image while you scroll through it and then keep going. All right, so let's finish this up. Um, uh, let's see. So if you want to add a video, let me just show you what that looks like. You just need to get the um, URL from YouTube 
Vimeo or Spark video. If you've made a Spark video and embed it here, that's a lot of extra work that you don't have to do. Um, but if you have a YouTube video, for example, so I should have already had one here, but I don't. So I'm going to go to YouTube. Um, I'm going to find an interview with Oppenheimer because I know that's something that's easy to get. It's available. So I'm just going to go to YouTube, search. Man, my internet's not fast today. I'm going to search for interview with Robert. Oops. I got it. Oppenheimer. There we go. Interview with Robert Oppenheimer. All right. So we will do this first one. You will scroll through and decide what you want to put in. I'm going to pause it so you don't have to hear it. Um, then you can either copy the URL up here, or you can right click or control click on a Mac and copy the video URL. Then we'll go back to Spark. We will paste it here and click Save. And there it is. All right, I'm just going to add the last bit of text so that if you want to look at this for the information that I've written, um, you'll have it. This is where you would put your conclusion. So I'm going to paste that in. That's where you write your conclusion. And then you're done. Something you may have noticed, um, let me see if I can just add something. See, the right up here, it says saving, and it disappeared when I typed that gibberish in and when I deleted it. So you'll notice that Spark saves your work as you go. That's a great thing. Um, but again, do keep, a, do keep an example or a, a, your work in a document of your own so that you don't lose anything. Because internet connections get bad, um, things happen even with the best of these digital uh, platforms. So save your work uh, on your own so you'll have it. You're done now, though. Um, this is saved. What you need to do is click Share in order to submit your work to Blackboard to tweet it out to the rest of us in the class. So you'll click Publish and Share Link. Um, you can click a category. I do Education. If you want your name on it, you can. It's up to you. Um, you can add your own photo credits. You can not be noticed if you don't want to. Um, and then you create the link. It takes just a second. And then this is what you'll do. You'll click Copy, and you will paste that link into Blackboard in the submission for the final project. Um, so that's all you have to do. Uh, this link will work. Note that you cannot, um, yeah, you cannot click, just click up here and uh, copy that link, the URL up in the browser bar, that will not work. Um, that would require me to have to sign into your account, and that's not something I'll be able to do. Um, so if you copy the link from up here and submit that, I won't be able to access your project. Make sure that you're copying this link here in the publish section. Um, you can share it with us on Twitter. I mean, please do if you feel comfortable with that. Love to see everybody's work there, and that's a way for you to see each other's work. Um, that's it, though. Hopefully this is helpful. Um, hopefully this gave you the technical kind of side of things that you need, as well as an understanding of what we're doing with this particular project in terms of its, its value for our history class. As always, sorry about that. As always, if you have questions, please don't hesitate to ask.